All right, the big battle, the big war, the big money here is all about games, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's a multi-billion dollar industry. And last year, the big news was 3DO. But this year, uh, it's here at the particular show is things like Silicon Graphics and Nintendo with their 64-bit announcement. It's Sega talking about the Hitachi chip they're going to do with 64-bit. They all want to take everybody up to the next generation. And nobody wants to lose. Everybody wants to be the big winner. So yeah, there's a lot of noise here. But the bottom line is that the game market is so big that this is going to be one of the biggest battles in the next few years. All right, let's go down to the floor of this winter CES and see the newest and the neatest in consumer technology. At this CES, there was evidence yet again of the merger of the entertainment industry and the computer industry. Hollywood and Silicon Valley were partners in a host of new products. Sony Electronic Publishing showed off Lawnmower Man, a CD-ROM game which uses film clips from the movie of the same name, which was all about virtual reality. In the game, you exist in a three-dimensional modeled world that lets you pan your environment a full 360 degrees. Sony was also showing off Cyber Race, a 3D combat and racing simulation that was designed by Sid Mead. He's no hacker. His film credits include Star Trek, Blade Runner, and Aliens. If you're a Star Trek Next Generation fan, Spectrum Holobyte came out with the first computer games featuring the new Star Trek crew of Captain Picard. Where images of reality can be created by our computer. Our... Virtual reality products were big at the CES. Advanced Gravis demonstrated its new VFX-1, a virtual reality headset that can connect to the VGA port of your PC. Logitech showed off its new Cyberman 3D controller. Not only can you navigate in three dimensions, but the Cyberman controller features pulsating tactile feedback so that you can actually feel it when you fire a weapon. Sports games expanded from the traditional football, basketball, and baseball simulations into hockey and soccer. This is Brett Hull hockey from Accolade, including play-by-play -play commentary from Al Michaels. The play action is based on actual digitized videotapes of real hockey players. And this is U.S. Gold's newest sports simulation, World Cup USA 94, just in time for the real World Cup soccer matches to be held in the United States starting in June. Virtual reality and simulations weren't limited to sports and adventure games at CES. This is the key from Lone Star Technologies, a game for tone-deaf rock music fans. Well, the key is an interactive multimedia musical instrument which allows anyone to become mus musical. It unlocks the music in all of us. And how it does that is by accepting what we call key code, which can come from a variety of different media sources. Key code consists of information of the bass line, the lead or melody line, the chord structure, and also the scaling, so that when you go up and down the neck of the unit, um, it's always in key with the music, and that's why we call it the key. Rickenstein says new music videos will be coming out with encoded tracks that will work with the key so that even you will be able to play along with Aerosmith, Guns N' Roses, and the Lemonheads. The battle between video game makers here at CES would probably make a pretty good video game itself as Sega, Nintendo, Commodore, Atari, and 3DO fight not only over market share but over the standards for a new video game rating system. And these companies such as Sega, 3DO, Atari, Acclaim, id, id Software, and Apogee already have and use rating systems. So there are rating systems in use today. But a proliferation of rating systems is confusing to retailers and to consumers alike. And even before this issue became an issue in the halls of Congress or in the media, there was a growing belief that we needed a single, easily recognizable system to rate and label our products. The Software Publishers Association sponsored this video game industry gathering in an effort to develop a unified rating system, similar to the one used by the movie industry. Parents have expressed increasing concern about the amount of violence in video games that are brought into the home. Secondly, uh, the congressional hearings uh, focused the attention of parents and the industry on this issue. The video game that brought attention to the violence issue is Mortal Kombat from Ultratech. Well, there are a lot of video games out there that, that are just as violent, I think, as Mortal Kombat is. It's just that Mortal Kombat has gotten the, the, the attention. 
And in those games, whether it's Mortal Kombat or something else, um, you will see if you walk around the show, you'll see other games where there's um, blood on screen, albeit animated. Um, and I think it, in comparison to other, whether it's TV or movie violence, um, it's relatively mild in, you know, in the final, final analysis. If you're not familiar with Mortal Kombat, um, it is a, a, a martial arts battle. There are uh, eight people that compete to be grand champion, and they go against each other in uh, with karate type moves, martial arts type moves. And at the end, in in our game, there are things called fatalities. And a fatality is uh, a move where someone can uh, finish another player. It doesn't necessarily take violence to make a bestseller video game. One of the all-time hits is Spectrum Holobyte's Tetris, written by a Russian programmer, Alexei Pajitnov. And he says the key to video game success is not violence or fancy hardware, but addictive gameplay. Uh, all the industry now is very concerned about, uh, about technology, about uh, more hardware, more, more technical stuff, but somehow the other part of the game, which is a human part, which is a psychological part, is a little bit in a, in a shadow. But this is very important because, you know, Tetris is a very simple game, but it's so addictive. But the real battle in the game industry is between the competing platforms. Sega is the current leader, but only by a slight margin over rival Nintendo. In an effort to keep their edge, Sega demonstrated the latest in player interface, the Activator, and they released Sonic the Hedgehog 3. In this newest version of Sonic, players can save unfinished games for later play. The hottest new 16-bit game system at CES was the new Genesis CDX. It's a portable unit that plays both cartridges and CDs. This game is Prize Fighter, an example of the fast action possible with the Genesis CD system. I'm stopping the fight. Another improvement in game technology is the ability to interact with remote opponents. You wouldn't think of AT&T as a game company, but they introduced something called Edge 16 a peripheral for the Sega Genesis unit that transmits your joystick movements over telephone lines to another player. The Edge 16 device also can transmit sounds so you can hear an opponent's reaction to your maneuvers. While Sega and Nintendo were fighting over the 16-bit game platform, much of the video game excitement at CES revolved around the new 32-bit game systems. The new 32-bit 3DO game console uses CD-ROMs and costs about $700. But the folks at 3DO say the difference in game playing is worth the price. The first thing I think that probably hits you will be the graphics and the animation. You're flying in this uh, fighter over the planet that looks extremely realistic with scenery fading in, in as you fly towards it. And then all of a sudden you say, gee, I want to do a barrel roll. And that, all that scenery, that very complex 3D scenery, just flips as you turn around. So the first thing that grabs you is, gee, the realism. 16 million colors instead of like 256 colors on a video game. Commodore is trying to regain its position as a game platform. This is the new Amiga CD32 game system. Like 3DO, it features 32-bit architecture. But unlike 3DO, the cost of the unit is under $400. Commodore says it can bring out the game system at a lower price because it's using existing Amiga computer technology. Nintendo announced plans for its new 64-bit game platform called Project Reality, developed in a joint venture with computer maker Silicon Graphics. But while Nintendo and Silicon Graphics were talking about a 64-bit game platform, old-timer Atari was shipping its new 64-bit Jaguar game system. It would be sweet irony for Atari, which founded the video game business and then lost it to come out on top in the next battle for the video game consumer. That's our look at the Winter Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Schaffee.